Welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Today I've got Ivan Valdez from the Real Life Fly Fishing Shop in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Ivan, how you doing? I'm doing great. Jay, how are you today? Good. I just uh, did a little fishing earlier today and our runoff here. I'm in uh, uh, kind of central Colorado uh, between Glenwood Springs and Aspen, and it's been so cold here, our uh, runoff actually hasn't even started uh, the rivers have actually cleared back up, and um, the fishing has been fairly good. Been doing some streamer fishing, and uh, there's actually still some blue winged olives coming off on the water uh, today when I was out there. So, um, kind of weird conditions. Um, usually, we're full blown muddy, and and you know the Roaring Fork and the Eagle and the Colorado are really raging. Uh, but you know, uh, Aspen, the ski area was open last weekend. They're actually opening back up this weekend as well. So. I'm um, curious to see how your conditions are doing down there in New Mexico. Oh, we've had some crazy conditions out here as well. Um, you know, we uh, we definitely have seen a little bit of runoff, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, it, it, yesterday I was guiding, say, on the Chama River, and it was snowing on us in the morning. So, <laughs> you know, a, a lot of our rivers are in runoff. Some of our streams are, are in great shape and are fishing really good. But um, when I was guiding the Chama River yesterday, it was high, but uh, it took us took us till about 12 o'clock for the fish to start biting because the air temperatures weren't above 38. But, you know, once it did, uh, it turned on pretty good, and we got ourselves some... Uh, some nice fish, including uh, a brown of a lifetime for one of our uh, one of our guests. That's awesome, Ivan. Uh, why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and um, the Real Life Fly Shop, um, how that came to be, and and where it's at, and give us kind of the history and rundown on your operation. Oh, you bet. So um, I've been fly fishing for over thirty five years, and uh, I grew up in Arizona. Um, so a lot of my fishing was, you know, in the White Mountains and around uh, on the Rim, of course, and Lee's Ferry and a lot of bass fishing. But my family was uh, originally from, from northern New Mexico, so I relocated back here uh, in 1997, and, you know, I just fell in love uh, with all the, all the mountains out here and, and all the, and all the uh, availability for fishing. I uh, started guiding uh, for the Taos Fly Shop, Oh, about 17 years ago uh, for my now business partner, Nick Strike. Um, so he owns the Taos Fly Shop, and I had been guiding for the real life for, uh, for a good while, and uh, we had a good opportunity uh, to buy it, uh, and this is going to be our, our, our sixth season owning it, and uh, it's been an awesome journey, an awesome ride, I'll tell you. Um, getting to wake up and, and the mountains are all around me and you know as a bunch of your podcast listeners uh they you know they they love the outdoors so i mean you know they kind of they might know what i mean by that and uh For you know sure. it's, it's what's really yeah what's really cool is i have such a sweet balance you know if i'm getting a little burned out on one i can all you know either guiding or the fly shop i can always revert back and go uh and go you know get my other gig going and it's just uh, I'm, I'm living the dream, as one of my guides would say. That's great. Um, so you're based out of Santa Fe, New Mexico. Talk about the waters that um, are around Santa Fe. Sure. So, like, the uh, the closest fishing to Santa Fe is approximately about an hour away. Um, and a lot of folks, but what's really cool about New Mexico is we don't have the crowds. You know, like Colorado, Montana, Idaho. And so... A lot of our rivers that we do get to fish, you know, we, we have that serenity where we're not wall-to-wall -wall anglers like, well, with the exception of like the San Juan in the summertime, you know, that can get pretty crowded, but for the most part, it's not too bad. And, you know, a lot of the rivers that we guide, uh, the Rio Grande, uh, the Chama River, the Conejos River in southern Colorado is, is an awesome river as well. Um, the Pecos River, which is uh, a little bit north uh, northeast of Santa Fe. You know, and then we have just bunches and bunches of small streams to fish as well. You know, uh, a lot of the small streams don't don't have, you know, the, the big, big fish in them, but, you know, there's a, a, a quantity of fish. But you can have your trophy fish as well. You know, uh, of course, I mean, when I've spoken with you in the past, 
you know, the San Juan, I've heard you have gone out there, so you, you know some of the quality fishing that we have, but um, some of the best-kept secrets like the Chama and the Conejos are just, I mean, you're in God's country, and, and you have a chance at a, at, at a brown or rainbow of a lifetime and uh, some dang good quality fishing. Ivan, mean, when would you say, um, you know, when you look at your yearly calendar, um, talk about some of the hatches that go off and some of the predominant hatches that you guys chase there on, whether it be small streams or some of the bigger rivers nearby. Um, like, you know, what are the major hatches that, that you know, are, are the best times for fishing, and then what are some of the other subsequent hatches? Well, let's say uh, our, our best hatches are coming up here, and it's going to be in late June, early July. We're going to get the stoneflies uh, hatching, and mostly what you're going to see in northern New Mexico are golden stones. Uh, you have a, a couple of, of places, the, the Pecos and the, uh, and the Guadalupe uh, River. They both have um, the Terranarces, you know, the salmon flies. Um, a lot of other good hatches we get, you know, are, are going to be, that are going to follow the stoneflies are going to be like caddis, and, of course, we have PMDs and, and, and blueing olives, you know, the betas. Uh, so we have a really good variety of hatches, but it, it's, what's nice is, you know, year in and year out, we've, we come to know when, when these hatches occur. Uh, so say like, uh, you know, uh, coming up here in late June, you know, the stones are going to start hatching on the Guadalupe and the, and the upper Chama, uh, the Pecos, and it's just a great time to throw big, meaty, foam dry flies, you know, and, um, you know, if, hey, if you're wanting to catch them on a drop or two, I mean, that's always an option, but, you know, it's, it's really cool to see a, fly, a fish come up and rise and, and take that dry fly, and, you know, that's what a, a lot of us are always in pursuit of in, in trying to get that, uh, th those moments, if you know what I mean. For sure. I mean, um, what about your fish uh, in these rivers? I mean, are you running predominantly browns? Is it 50-50 rainbows and browns? Um, what, what are you looking at as far as, and maybe it's different from, from each river and kind of go through that? Um, yeah, sure. So it's, we do, what's, what's cool is we have four species of, of fish up here. We have our, our Rio Grande cutthroats. Um, we have brook trout, rainbow trout, and brown trout as well. Um, you know the uh, what I love pursuing are the browns because they're 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 wild out here. We don't stock browns at all in New Mexico, and um, like the I mean I you saw a picture of that one that we hooked up on yesterday, and I tell you that was a, an adrenaline rush and a half, uh, even for a guide. I tell you, um, to get to the Rio Grande cuts, you know it's going to require some effort on uh, for the. Uh, for the angler, you know, it's usually going to require a pretty good hike, uh, you know, getting away to some places that are a lot more untouched, I guess you could say, and kind of same thing with the brookies, but the, the more accessible fish are going to be your rainbows and browns, that's for sure. Would you say that it's a 50-50 split in most cases, or is there actually more rainbows than browns, or how does it work? Well, well, New Mexico is managed as a put-and-take uh, in, in the majority of, of your places. So what they stock are, are going to be, you know, predominantly rainbows. But um, so you're going to have, I would say, probably like 60, 40, uh, you know, maybe just a little bit higher with your rainbows. But um, there's many, many opportunities to catch the browns, too. One of my favorites is my favorite personal river to fish is the Chama. And... Um, what we have and what's so special about it is there's two tailwater sections, and then we have a really big freestone section. And um, these, these big lake run fish are getting into the river right now. And, you know, I know folks that, you know, I've been to Argentina and I've been to, you know, Montana, Wyoming, and in pursuit and of, these big, uh, of these big creatures, and, I mean, they're, an hour away from where I live, so it's just it's always really nice to be able to to hit that when uh, when that opportunity arises when when this wane of runoff really kind of mellows out is is really when we're gonna uh, be keyed in on that. When you're targeting some of those big fish, are you fishing streamers? Are you you know deep water nymphing? Are you what what kind of is your go-to tactic? For me personally. 
I I I think nymphing is is the is the way to go with them. Um, a lot of my guides will, will will toss some meat and and get the streamers going, and I think that uh, it's kind of fifty fifty. If uh, you, you know, um, it's my personal preference is 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 throwing nymphs though. You know, big stonefly nymphs uh, are, are some of my favorites. Um, a uh, couple, you know, beta nymphs as well. Those work really good, and and uh, but your your bigger fish seem to be eating the the bigger bigger flies, uh, you know, big crane flies as well. So um, that's kind of what I see with them. What about um, high country lakes? Um, does New Mexico have uh, much in the way of of some high country lakes that you know you can get out and, and explore? Absolutely. Um, especially up by the Santa Fe Ski Basin. Uh, you, I believe there's like seven lakes, uh, and what you're going to get out of those two are, uh, you know, you have the cuts up there too, cutthroats, and they get to really, really nice-sized uh, nice sized fish. Um, but, you know, getting up uh, north of Santa Fe too, there's uh, that whole Pecos wilderness has some really nice high country lakes. And uh, a lot, what a lot of a lot of my guides like to get up and do also is get up in the Colorado. Southern Colorado has some, you know, really really nice high country lakes as well. And you know, it's, what's really sweet and special about them is they're so far away from any kind of central hub, you know, Albuquerque or Denver, that they just they don't really see a lot of pressure, which is pretty cool. Where is your fly shop um, located within Santa Fe? So we're kind of close to downtown Santa Fe. We're across, uh, basically across the street from the National Cemetery um, up there. It's we're located inside of De Vargas Mall, actually. So uh, it's not very far from from the from the square. Maybe like about a three or four minute drive. It's a uh, it's a really great location. We've been really happy with it. Do you feel like New Mexico somewhat is, um, you know, doesn't get the recognition that it deserves as far as some of the quality fishing that it has because it seems like it's, you know, overshadowed by Colorado and, and uh, you know, Montana and Idaho and Wyoming and some of the other states. Absolutely. Um, I think a big reason uh, for that, too, is, is we don't have the, the, the water that those states do, you know. Um, you know, our, our big rivers out here are, are our major four, well, actually three, is the San Juan, the Rio Grande, and the, uh, and the Chama. Other than that, we really don't have, you know, the big rivers that a lot of folks are, are looking for. But, I mean, those three rivers are, are pretty special in my heart, that's for sure. And, and uh, But, yeah, I don't see New Mexico getting that, uh, the crowds. And I, I, you know, I totally love that about this state. You know, you get out there and, like I tell folks this, when I get out and fish the Rio Grande or I'm guiding the Rio Grande, yeah, you might see a couple of anglers here and there, but shoot, usually when you're out there, you know, you, you like feel it's like you have your own piece of private water. With these um, hatch, hatches that you say are coming up, a lot of that has to do with the water temperatures warming. Is there one hatch that you would say um, is your favorite, and then is there one hatch that you would say is most predominant and, you know, lasts the longest? The, my favorite, I would have to say, and that, that, you know, it lasts pretty good, is, is the blueing olive hatch on the Rio Grande. The Rio Grande, it, you know, it has a, some different sections. You have some, some fairly easy, accessible areas, and then you have the Rio Grande Gorge, which takes some effort to get in, um, but the, the the blue wings hatch there at two different times of year. What the Rio Grande's really famous for is its caddis hatch. You know, the, it's it's a lot like the Arkansas River up there in Colorado. We get it about the same time, and uh, you know, it's around Mother's Day, the tax day hatch. Um, but before the caddis hatch happens, you know, you do have the the blue wings coming off, and they're coming off, and you know. Uh, big time too. It's it's not really a dry fly river, but you you know on those cloudy days they'll they'll look up too. But what's the, my most special time on the Rio Grande is the fall uh, to watch the betas hatch. Then, I mean you have all the colors you know around the river too, and it just it makes for a really sweet experience getting to look around and 
and uh, and be able to see all that. And then the fishing. I mean, the fish are just eating hard because they're getting you know they're putting on weight for the winter, and it's a it's a pretty special time to be out there. How often do you get up to the San Juan up below Navajo Dam and and fish on the actual San Juan River? Myself personally, I would say, oh, maybe five or six times a year. Um, what have you seen with that river as far as, you know, where is it in its stage of, of you know, is it is it doing good? Is it, you know, w- what status is it at? It, uh, you know, the San Juan went through a little bit of, of, of trouble, of, oh, I would say for about a two-month period, and it just started clearing up, but there was so much early snow melt this year that it got into the into the river channel in the lake, and for the first time that I could ever recall, the Juan was, you know, it was pretty dirty, like chocolate milk, and uh, it fished really tough. The water temperatures got really cold and low. I mean, usually the Juan is like about, you know, 42, 43 degrees year-round, but it got lower than that, so the fish were fishing really, really, you know, slowed down. But lately, it's been awesome. I have one of my guides up there right now, and I just talked to him earlier today, and and he said it was uh, it was pretty sweet up there right now. But yeah, the the drought, you know, I mean the, that those that lake level has been so up and down the last few years. This year, you know, by the grace of God, we we've, we've had a, just an incredible amount of snowpack, and it's helping fill our reservoirs and and getting back and getting things back to par and. I don't know if the San Juan is going to uh, have a its big uh, release this year. From what I'm hearing, that they're not going to, but that remains to be seen. On some of your more local rivers, you know, the Chama and the Rio Grande and what have you, um, on years like this where there's plenty of snowpack, I mean, do you guys in late summer, do you run into where the water temperatures are getting too high where they have to, you know, kind of call off fishing it? at noon and not fish the afternoons, or does the water typically stay cold and, and you're able to fish all summer long? Like a year like this, it's, it's like I think this year is going to be epic, and it's going to be all summer long. Um, you know, it, it, the water temperatures remain at a, at, a, at a great level. You know, the, it's not anywhere near like last year where you know, I was getting a little spooked, uh, you know, with some of the, some of the days, you know, and I, call, I called a couple of trips a little bit early last year, but I think this year is going to be fantastic. I'm so looking forward to, uh, to the upcoming season. It's uh, it should look, it's just going to be good, I think. Is there any one particular fly um, throughout the summer? Um, you know, obviously, if there's hatches, you want to match the hatch as much as you can. But I mean, is there is there a go-to fly that you just fish? you know, when maybe there's not a predominant hatch going, or, or what is your method usually, uh, your go-to method? Well, I have this fly that I designed. It's, uh, it's you know, based on the Star Wars series, and it's a it's a Betis pattern, and the most popular one I have is the Master Yoda. And uh, I've been fishing with that fly for, oh, geez, I'd say 16 years, 15 years, and Umpqua just picked it up, and so you know your your local shops might be able to have it. If not, let me know. I can I can get you dialed in with that. But it's it's been my go to fly, and um, it seems to me like I always have it trailing a bigger fly or you know an attractor, obviously. And it just uh, it's a, it has a tungsten bead, and even though it's a size twenty, it still gets down pretty quick. And uh, you know fish have. Uh, have been crushing it uh, for years now for me. I was uh, I was lucky enough to have my Umpqua rep in, in my fly shop, and uh, you know I had never really thought anything about it. And he he saw the patterns, and he was like, "Man, you should submit those, uh, and, and you know get get them out there." And and uh, I, I was like, "Really?" And <laughs> it turned out to be a quite a quite a journey, quite a quite an experience to to have that happen for me. I'm, I've been pretty proud of that, I'd have to say. So you're an official tire for Umqua then? Yes, sir. That's awesome. So how many patterns have they picked up? They've only picked up three. Uh, or well, That's the one pattern, but they picked up three colors on it. Uh, they picked up the chartreuse, uh, purple, and, uh, and red. 
my my personal favorites are the gray and the olives, though. But those uh, those other ones are pretty deadly and as well. And you know, Umpqua is just like, yeah, we just kind of want to see the response to these, and um, I'm I'm anticipating they're gonna pick up a couple of more colors as well here coming uh, coming up next season. As far as flies in your fly shop, um, you know, talk a little bit about the inventory and what you guys carry there in the fly shop. And if people are, you know, headed to New Mexico to go fishing, can they just stop in and pick up flies? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, we have uh, tons and tons of flies. <laughs> Sometimes, I mean, my fly bins are, are are overflowing into some of the plastic bins now. You know that the old school, you can pull them out like a, like a drawer kind of. So I have, a, I, I don't know, I have countless amounts of patterns. But what I, what I pride um, my, myself and our fly shop in is our customer service. You know, we, we feel that, uh, you know, if we help, help folks out, you know, and, and give them good advice or they experience a really great guide trip with us, you know, chances are they're going to come back. And, um, you know, that's just always been a, a, a big deal for me and making sure folks are taken care of. Um, you know, some folks don't have an opportunity to come into the store, and uh, we understand that, but we, you know, we can – we also mail flies out, you know, hey, uh, but, you know, yeah, if you can come into the store, we're more than happy to help you out, either with a guide or, or you know, pointing you in the right direction. Um, my business partner has, uh, his dad's name is Taylor Strite, and he is uh, in the Freshwater Hall of Fame, and he has a few books out, and one of them is Fly Fish New Mexico, and it's a really, really good book. It gets you pointed in the right direction, has fishing spots, you know, hatch charts, the whole nine yards. But, yeah, whatever you need, we're, uh, we're there to help you. Um, seems like he wrote that book and co-authored it with a guy named Glenn Tennant. Does that ring a bell? No, but Maybe I heard, not. isn't Glenn from up at, uh, I heard Glenn's up in, uh, isn't he from Lee's Ferry? Yeah, he was a lease ferry guide for a long time, and I think he's up at Durangler's now in, in Durango, but maybe I'm getting that mixed up. I actually used to work for Glenn um, at the fly shop uh, in Phoenix. Uh, he owned a shop called, the uh, I think it was Complete Fly Fishing, and then it moved to Scottsdale, and uh, they, they um, started calling it uh, the Desert Sportsman. Uh, but mm. I've heard he's moved up to Durang Durangler's, but... Uh, I, I think I actually remember we used to carry that book, um, and maybe that's where I'm getting it mixed up, but I definitely remember uh, that name straight, uh, you know, as far as referencing New Mexico. Well, that's cool that you have them as a partner. And, um, Ivan, is this your full-time? Is this what you do all the time, or do you have another business as well? No, this is uh, full-time, running the, running the fly shop and, and, uh, and, uh, and guiding and, That's um, awesome. I'm so blessed. How much guiding, yeah, I'm blessed, man. How much guiding, well, sorry, how much ahead. time do you get to spend out on the water? Uh, definitely not as much as I have in the past. You know, I'm, I'm getting, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I, I still love it, you know, but I'm definitely not guiding as much as when I was in my 30s. But, you know, shoot, it seems like every come every July I'm, I'm out there, you know, I don't have a day off. It ever seems like in July. So, you know, I'm still I'm still rocking and rolling. It's what's really cool about my gig and what I like about it is I can kind of pick and choose when I want to get out and and uh, and, and you know, I most of my clientele is are, are my return clients. So that's how you know I've built a, a lot of relationships and bonds. And I, I you know you probably know what that's about. You you being an outfitter and guide for many years as well. So. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm totally blessed, and I'm blessed to have a really, really awesome business partner. I got into this business, and, you know, he had been established already in Taos for a, such a long time that it made the, the transition just super easy. You know, we got our – we carry Patagonia, Columbia, Orvis, Sims, and uh, to name Winston, you know, to name a few of those of, – of the brands we carry. And, you know, it just was – it was a real seamless um, – transition to get to get that all dialed in 
Well, good for you. That's awesome. Uh, I know we met uh, last year actually in Douglas, Arizona. You guys, you and your dad were, I think, just heading down going to uh, uh, go hunt coos deer. You've been hunting coos deer down there for a while, and I think you and your dad were, were heading out on a trip, and I forget if I was coming or going, but I think I, I, think I was in between trips, and um, that's where I met you, and we kind of started talking about fishing and and um, it sounds like you also like hunting and hunting with your dad and coos deer. And um, do you also hunt, you know, turkey, elk? Do you have other passions as well of, of hunting? Oh, yes, absolutely. And, you know, I get to share that all with my father, you know. And, and to me, you know, my dad's getting up there now. He's in his early 70s. And, uh, you know, to me, that's just like the most special thing, uh, one of the most special things in my life, you know, uh, Yes, will I continue doing it till I get old and gray? Of, of course, but you know, just these these times, you know, that when you're a lot younger, you don't they don't sink in as much. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and now that you're getting, you know, I'm getting a little bit older too, and so is he. It's like, dang, you know, it, it's a, it's a pretty awesome experience to be out there and, and do those things with him. And shoot, he still moves around pretty good in that coos country. I, you know, I, I was pretty psyched this last year to see him and. But we love the coos hunt, man. It's it's so so fun. Um, but other interests, I love the elk hunt. If I could, uh, and we both drew bull elk tags this year, along with my wife as well, for a really late hunt up here in northern New Mexico. And uh, didn't know the last two days were Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, but <laughs> we're gonna try and work <laughs> around that. I'm just, hey man, I'm happy to get a bull tag in my pocket. You know, it's uh. Uh, I, I can't wait. And, that, and the unit we're going to has got some really nice bulls that come in off the Hickaria. And um, I can't wait for that to roll around. My dad drew that tag, uh, the the same unit, uh, for a, a really limited entry deer hunt last year. And uh, we had some success, and it was uh, it was pretty special. Well, that's awesome. That's It's uh Great to get to talk to you. Um, I'm looking at your Instagram right now, looking at some of these photos, and you sent me some photos of your trip yesterday out on the Chama, and I want to encourage the listeners, uh, if, you, if you would like to fish in northern New Mexico, give Ivan a call. Uh, make sure you check out the Real uh, Life Fly Shop there in Santa Fe. Uh, and uh, Ivan, I want to take a second here to thank the sponsors of my podcast. I want to thank GoHunt.com. If you guys are looking for binoculars, spotting scopes, rifle scopes, uh, anything to do with glassing, tripods, uh, my friend Cody Nelson of 20-plus years, he's the optics manager there. You can reach him at 702-847-8747. That's extension 2. You can also send him an email at optics at GoHunt.com. I also want to thank Kuyu, that's K-U-I-U, Kuyu Ultralight Hunting. You can find out more about them at, at Kuyu, that's K-U-I-U dot com. Uh, also, Canyon Coolers, based right out of Flagstaff, Arizona. If you use the JSCOT19 promo code, you're going to save 10%. Uh, also, Phonescope.com, if you go on my Instagram and look at any of the photos or any of the videos on my Instagram page, you'll you'll see that they're done with the phone scope device. Uh, it's uh, the best digiscoping device out there. Fits right on the iPhone 10. Uh, and if you use the J Scott 19 at, at phonescope.com, you're going to get a 10% discount. And then onxmaps.com, if you use the J Scott 19 promo code, you're going to get a 20% discount. All you got to do is go to onxmaps.com and sign up, and you'll get that 20% discount if you use the JSCOT19. Ivan, it's awesome to get to talk to you. Um, if you can hear it in your voice, you're passionate about fishing. I'm excited to watch your progress over the summer. I'm going to be following your photos. Please send them to me as well, and I'll try and do the same. I appreciate you taking your time uh, this afternoon to talk to us, and I'm going to give you a chance to let people know exactly where they can find you, exactly where they can reach out, and I'll also link them up in the show notes. So why don't you do that? Awesome. Yeah, so you can you can call us anytime at 505-995-8114. 
and our um, both our Instagram and our Facebook pages are the real life, and that's spelled R E E L. Um, if any of your listeners mention your podcast, I'd be more than happy to give them ten percent off on a guided fly fishing trip. So, awesome! You know, Thank call you for, for that. Yeah. Oh yeah, you bet, man. And I hope to get you down here someday soon, and and uh, and get uh, you know share my passion and and show you some uh, some of these waters here in northern New Mexico. And if any of you ever have any questions or or concerns or you need river conditions, feel free to call us. We're we'll be more than happy to help you out. And Jay, I really appreciate you uh, taking your time today and and getting me on your podcast and letting me share. My passion for these for the New Mexico outdoors with your listeners and um, and I hope to see you uh, see you out here sometime, buddy. Yeah, I can't wait to come down. Some of those browns are beautiful. The spots that you're fishing are beautiful, so it looks like a great time. Um, yeah, I'm excited. So uh, sounds great, buddy. Thanks for spending time with us and uh, thanks for uh, bringing bringing some good knowledge to us and bringing some you know value to the podcast. So I appreciate it and encourage the listeners to reach out to Ivan. He's a good dude. Thank you, brother. You have yourself a great day, huh? All right, buddy. God bless. Take care.